Yeah, I can attack again. Good night. <laughs> it's okay to lose the cereal. All that getting clapped up, it's gonna help you win your next bicycle. Through a 3 1 deficit! Oh! Oh! Blocked by James! Blocked by James! So wake up! Wake up, Sam! You got to win this YCS! Come on! I got a YCS to win. Ladies and gentlemen, we are here, guys. Yo, we just came straight off of winning at YCS. Oh my goodness, guys, bro. Man's man did it. Man's man. did it, bro. Everyone doubted, and uh, bro, I'm actually so happy for you, bro. Thank you, bro. You put everyone you. wrong, you know what I'm saying? Thank you. Honestly, bro, honestly, the, the hardest thing in my life is uh, beating one person, you know what I'm saying? Like, honestly, I just can't manage to, to just, you know, beat this one single person, but honestly, that doesn't matter. You know, I went undefeated. We went undefeated. We went undefeated today. 14-0. 14-0, guys. I honestly, I always knew it was possible for me to do it. Uh, but today is definitely the day. And uh, yeah, guys, I just won the YCS Cancun. Um, and here's going to be my deck profile. I'll explain to you guys all our card choices while we play certain cards. And, you know, give you guys a little bit of a, you know, an in-depth guide on what, what, what we did for the tournament and how prepped we were uh, for YCS. Uh, Cancun. So, Pac, finish, you finished top eight? I finished top eight. Same exact list, guys. Same exact list, card for card. Whenever Pac and I go to an event, we theorize and yeah. we figure out that it's always best to play the same card list. And that's what we all, then that's what we always do. So, we have 42 cards. 42. And obviously, we pick UBEL. And why are you picking UBEL? Bro, it's just, it's just the best deck. And sometimes, look, sometimes the best deck isn't always the be best deck choice. I always preach this. But I think um, the deck's power level is leagues. Ahead, out of everything else, yes, in the format, and I think we teched our deck very well. After you looking at the results from YCS Lil, yes, YCS yes. uh, Chile, um, and I think we're really, really repaired. And I think this shows the fact that Sam and I both top together. Not a lot of people know how to play Yu Bell. Yeah, <laughs> it's just because like a lot of people don't actually know how to do the combos correctly. Like no, like like Gosh. no shade, no nothing. It's just like, no, it's no, just, no. It's shade. just a hard deck. It's it's, just, it's a hard deck because. We don't play hand traps, so we tell Horn, yeah, keep going, fam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> guys, so. They start stressing, and they're like, the board is like never the board we were making. The way we practice is that uh, against each other, we set up the god board, and we draw off six card hands yeah. to see who can break the god boards. And I'm telling you guys, not even one time this entire tournament, except for Joaquin. Joaquin, yeah. Yeah, Joaquin, he's from Argentina, that set up the proper god board. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, nobody else in the tournament set up the proper guard board that I faced. So I played 14 rounds total, uh, went undefeated, 14-0. I played 11 mirrors. Yeah. 11 U-Bell mirrors, yeah. okay? And all my, the, the five mirrors, no, I played four U-Bell mirrors in top cut and one Tenpai. Yeah. So it was U-Bell, U-Bell, U-Bell. No, it was U-Bell, U-Bell, Tenpai, and the finals I played U-Bell. Yeah. So like, yeah, like this deck was obviously the best deck in the entire room. It was. So we built our deck to beat it, obviously. So we built the, so we built this deck to beat you, Bell. But in our side decks, we kind of like also prepared for Tenpai. Oh yeah. You know what I'm saying? So the two decks that we were just worried about, Tenpai, okay, and you, Bell. Yeah. So yeah, this is the deck list right here. And just a quick look, look at this, guys. God damn. Dude. God, what is this? Um, well, Solaria thing. Uh, another verse, uh, Solaria. How much is this? Uh, is this the same price as Mickey Mouse from Locarno? <laughs> is it the same price or no? Uh, definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah, this is this is the best. This is this is this this is why I want, baby. And honestly, guys, I would not have done this well if it wasn't for this guy right here. Nah, uh, nah. Obviously, obviously, he's obviously my mentor and also my coach. So basically, the way I learned Yu-Gi-Oh is I learned through Pac. So everything that Pac teaches me, I absorb like a sponge, and he, I just listen. Pac does this thing uh, that he coaches players on how to become better. I'm not even capping, guys. Like I'm not even good at Yu-Gi-Oh. Like I'm not. Like, <laughs> Stop. No, like I'm actually not. 
Like compared to like Jesse, Pac, and all these other pro players out there, I'm leagues below them. Like I'm not, I'm not great, but what I, I'm good at is I'm good at listening to instructions and I'm, and I'm good at actually following plays and learning why certain cards interact this way. And this is why what Pac is really good at teaching. There was a crazy spreadsheet that Pac has made that has compiled over hundreds of hours on all the Ubel combos that you need to know when it comes to playing this deck. Proper lines, pro proper instructions, and like a literal tutorial on how to become a better Ubel player or even just a better Yu-Gi-Oh player in general. And Pac will coach and teach you. And anybody that wants to get better at Yu-Gi-Oh, I recommend you guys checking out his Metafy because coaching is not cap. Guys, look at yeah. me. Like, I just get straight up sweet by Syriacs every week. But I, was, I somehow managed to win the YCS. Guys, check out Pox Metify and uh, join the classroom today. And, you know, I'll be there. And I love to test out with all you guys that join his classroom. I'll leave the links down below. Guys, this deck list, by the way, that we're going to show you guys, it was in the Metify classroom the week before the YCS even occurred. Like, yes. this has already been out. If you guys want to get ahead, you know, this is, I think, like, the best way to do it. And look, anyone who can become a YCS champion, you know, mate, the thing is... I did it, so you can do it too. <laughs> And a quick shout out to Office Park and also Trinity YGO yeah. uh, who will help me also test as well uh, with, the, with the deck. And uh, yeah, let's come. Take a look at the deck list. Triple Sand, Broken. Bro, like, this is the best, like, best starter. Best starter. Actually, you know what's crazy? This is, the, people think this is the best starter, but it's not even the best starter in our deck. Exactly. Show, show them the real best starter. The best starter in our deck? <laughs> Yo. Beckoning. Beckoning. This card is OD, guys. I don't even know how to explain it. Throughout practice, we thrown for beckoning. Yes, yes. Like everyone thinks you thrown for Lotus, but beckoning is so much better. Couple like couple reasons, right? Like Lotus is what does what it tributes for cost. Mm -hmm. So if you get interrupted with Lotus, you lose the body. Mm. Beckoning, it will stick itself on the board regardless, right? It's so powerful. Yeah. Uh, and also, guys, if you guys don't know, in the classroom, one beckoning, okay, one beckoning, and one discard off gates, okay. Verudris, Desare. Phantom, Rage. Rage. Why one, is it, one card? One card, and not nobody knows that. The reason why we like we you'll see the rest of the the way we build our deck is because literally like I've seen people all weekend open like thrown beckoning, and you don't end on the top board, and they were ending on the same board I do with one beckoning. Yes. So I, I looked over to my left. I was like, like you know, this guy was playing Ruben, and he like he lost, and like I saw his board. I'm like, yo, bro, did you open like thrown beckoning like? Like, how did you end on Veru just rage? Yeah, because like, because every two card combo in your deck ends in the god board. Yeah, but people don't know how to do the god board. And god yeah. board is, is is rage, Veru just is already phantom and seizure. And seizure. Yeah. So it's like that's literally like nine negates. Yeah. Because rage is three negates within itself, right? Yeah. Which is really strong. So beckoning is just really powerful. You thrown for this card is so good, and this also is really important for another engine that we're playing in the deck a bit later on. Yeah, we'll which show we'll, you later. We'll show you a bit later. Yeah. So obviously that's the main U bell, U bell, uh, double spear U bell. Okay, let's talk about this. Yeah, yeah. and show, show the show the big man too. And, and the big men's, all yeah. right. And uh, terror, you always gotta play terror. Um, anybody that plays one copy of this, I'm sorry for you, bro. <laughs> like, please do not play one copy. Anybody that plays one copy is kind of like you're silly. You also survive matches against ten by just having these in your hand, exactly. Because we play um, the cashier engine. Yeah, okay, which we'll show you. Yeah, we'll show you later. We'll show you in a bit. But the cashier engine ripping Samurai Sword makes it so they have a really hard time outing Spirit of you Bell, which makes it so you survive under like Shifter and like. Yes, you know. yes, yes. So it's insane. So that's uh, you made you Bell cards, and obviously you played, and two Scroosums, Great Screamer. Uh, two copies definitely needed. I would not play one or three. Three, three is good, but I, I wouldn't play three. I still think that like, like against like a, uh, a runic matchup, I, you know, I, I did. He did banish one. Yeah. I played against one runic in a uh, runic Whitewood. He banished one, so had that second one. The main deck is really good. And now off to more Yubanjins, of course. Uh, triple copies Ooh, of Nightmare Throne. God Obviously damn. terraforming and holy shoot, yo. Yeah. The reason why our decks are a bit better this tournament then everybody's in the room is because we got five copies of throne yeah five copies of throne okay usually it's four copies but we got five bro set rotation and bro so every game i drew set rotation i won the game all right and the reason why set rotation is so good is because not only is it thrown it, 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 it's it's like you want to draw this over throne yeah and the reason why it's better is because it turns off imperm it turns off imperm, it turns off imperm bro <clears throat> it just turns off imperm and that's already like three hand traps that are dead gone mm -hmm. plus throne yeah and like so for example it's like if they open hands with imperm ash right you like or like impermanent plus any other hand trap, you go thrown, uh, pop the monster make phantom. So that checks two hand traps, yeah. right? With, with just one set rotation, uh, which is insane. So uh, that's that. And also for other region, Carmen, we play of course the gates, uh, and of course uh, nightmare pain, and now off to the fiendsman engine. Yeah. Now I'll let you explain this, Pac. Uh, track, Lurie, and 
This card's the worst card in our deck. Yeah, I, guys, I know it looks crazy. Like, bro, like, are we on budget? Like, why are we playing two Feastmen? Because I promise you, it's not for budget issues, clearly. Um, it's, <laughs> okay. um, it's basically because when we were doing the combos and we were doing this, all the making the spreadsheet, we realized one thing. We actually want to tutor and access the Feastmith through our combos. We don't actually like want to draw, draw it. Yeah. Like it's fine to have it. You have to play the two one one ratio because it's like an engine requirement. Yes, yes. Because you don't want to like make it a you don't want to make fees yeah, with a, a brick. starter. A starter. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So like, you have like, to play like, enough it's, of it. Like it's a good. It's it's the worst one card starter in the deck. It's the worst one card starter in the deck. Yeah. But like we don't want to see it. You know, like we yeah. like we like we want to like, like we, we, we want to play the smallest amount possible. So, um, without making it, um, without giving us the chance of ever drawing multiples of these, because like if you open like double feedsmith in hand, for example, it's like really bad. So we want to make it so that we only draw these like this engine, like maybe like one once. Like we don't really want to draw. Like I said, we try to tutor it through our combo. Yes. Uh, because usually the way we combo is we use rage to add this back to your hand, and then we use it, and then we use it after and get access to DSR that way. So that's why like it's like we just play like the smallest amount possible without turning the engine into a brick if we draw. Right. Mm. If we play one feedsmith. Then we draw it, it becomes a break because we don't have, you know, track in our deck or stuff like that. But yeah, this was good. Next off, of course, Andrew Requirement, Shavara, and A Bomb. The worst is the worst card in your deck to draw. Yeah. Obviously, that's, that's not Fiend Smith, I cap. But this is the worst starter to draw. But uh, this is like the worst. Like, if you draw this, you just want to cry. Yeah. Uh, but Shavara is actually insane. Crazy bro. to draw. Crazy to draw. Crap. Is yeah. it? No, no. I like Shavara. I like Shavara. Bro, because uh, again, so uh, uh, Joaquin, he's a really great player. Like, he's the only person in this entire tournament yeah. with the U Bell mirror. That ended on the godboard, like yeah. to, against against me. Yeah, he ended on the godboard. I ended up cracking it. Yeah, because of the how the way our deck is built. But he's the only person that ended on the godboard. Yeah. and the reason I was able to win yeah. is because he tried to. I summoned Spirit of U Bell, and I set pain, and he goes rage. Target target Spirit, Spirit of U Bell. You change Shavara. I change Shavara. Yeah, and it's like, and I haven't used pain yet. Wow, this wow. engine was crazy. I have wow. stories. Wow. I got stories. Wow. <laughs> guys, this. Oh my god, guys! If my girl was like babes. Unicorn or me, I pick Unicorn. <laughs> I'm sorry, like, oh, Draco? Oh, you're cute, bro. Summon? Some Unicorn or, or Draco? Game? Yeah. Uh, and not only that, it's like, do you guys know what Trap Dust Shoe is? You know what it's banned? No. You, know, you guys know what Trap Dust Shoe is banned, right? So, when you Unicorn, they hand trap you, you look at their extra deck. Yep. You know what deck they're playing. Yep. You, you rip the card. You always rip Sequence, by the way. Yep. Rip the Sequence in the mirror. And then you win the game. You're, you're not losing once you rip Sequence. On top of that, the amount of hand traps these guys eat alone yep. is like unexplainable. Yeah. Like They're, race like, the uh, It just applies a lot of pressure. Yes. Yeah. Yes. These cards are really great, not only for the fact that, you know, they apply a lot of pressure, but you might be wondering like, why are we playing this? Well, first of all, there's a couple of random synergies that are important to take note of. Birth is a continuous spell. So you, when you open Beckoning plus um, Unicorn, you can actually get a free discard of Birth off of Gates. Um, and you can actually add the Birth back to your hand Yes. Uh, because it is a continuous spell. Um, the Unicorn, it's also a really good, Unicorn and Frenier are really good outs to, uh, you know, as Sam mentioned, like Tenpai when they make a Radix Seal, because these are free summons from the hand. Um, and then going second, these cards overperform because they give you extra bodies for the tech in our extra deck, which is going to be Goddess. Uh, because this allows you to get enough bodies in order to link off your opponent's entire board, which people definitely did not expect. Um, yeah, and honestly guys, I know that like... Um, here, so this is Goddess right here. Yeah, yeah. this is the reason why the Castor engine is uh, really, really strong, because going second, the cash, like, Unicorn is two monsters, um, but uh, Unicorn plus, let's say, Beckoning, breaks the entire board, yes. like the mirror going second. Because you go Special Unicorn, yes. normal Beckoning, get Gates, activate Gates, get another, normal summon, another Beckoning. Your opponent doesn't really interact with you at this point, because they're just like, bro, this doesn't do anything. Yes. And then, literally, you can make, you can link off three of your monsters, and link off um, like your opponent's rage. rage. And and honestly, every yeah. U-Bell, I think like, I played 11 U-Bell. Yeah. I played against 11 U-Bell uh, uh, mirrors. And I think... The majority of them are on what, escape? Majority of them are on the escape. Which so, gets punished by this crazy. Which gets punished by goddess, okay? Yeah. Uh, because, you know, like even like if you heart make phantom and you opening beckoning, right? So you heart make phantom, you go beckoning, gates, beckoning. You have three monsters on the field. They have rage up. They can't use rage to interact with your phantom because phantom is a cost of tribute. So rage fizzles. So they just usually let that go. And then once you make goddess, you link away rage and your three monsters into uh, with with the Kashira or yeah. the phantom to make goddess. That's instant <clears throat> game because this card when it comes out, it's kind of like a cold wave, yeah. uh, which is really strong. I don't think about card effects that doesn't target it, right? That's how yeah. it works. Yeah, doesn't target it. So she's absolutely broken. And all summons she negates all of your opponent's uh, monsters. Um, so like you would negate their whole board. So like the Verugis, the DSR, their Caesar, uh, their Phantoms all gets negated. 
and, and they, also it they, stops the a bomb. All, yeah, it also stops like a, um, a bomb, uh, like uh, Unchained Abominations Prison to or to uh, you know bring back Rage. It can get Yama. It can get actually Spirit of Yubel because it has potential to summon from the grave. Um, the card is really really crazy. Um, and usually when we crack the board, we actually you know keep this on the board as we cracked it too because we can negate their Feast Smith effect to reborn on the follow up. Yes. So it's just like overall an insane card. And then the craziest part is. This card can be linked off in a Requiem right after. So it's, it's, a, combo it's, it's, a, it's a Life Fiend. It's a Life Fiend. So once you yeah. fold this, you make her, you, you go Requiem, you full combo. Yep. So huge shout out to Doc and his boys. Um, yo, Doc, I love you. You know what I'm saying? Uh, this profile definitely inspired like, a lot of like uh, the ideas in this deck. Yes. Uh, like yeah. like Wednesday, uh, Tuesday. Yeah, it was like Tuesday. Um, Sam calls me, he's like, yo, what are we playing for Cancun? I'm like, yo, I just saw this deck profile. I think they can have some really good ideas. And we were gassed. Yeah, we're like, I think, I like, I don't, I didn't really understand it. But like I kind of like pieced it together as I watched their profile, and I was like, "Wait a second! I think Goddess could actually be like the edge we need." Yes. Um, and it definitely like you know, I could see that it did really well for these guys because I was trying to understand like how the hell did these guys talk? Yeah. Like I didn't understand. I'm like, this should make some sense. Yes. And I was like, oh, okay, I I think it's like Goddess like Goddess was doing some God's work. Yes. Yes. And they're in their games. So. Yeah. So Goddess is absolutely insane. So yep. huge shout out to that video. You got a huge ins ins inspiration from that. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. the Kashtir engine, which is obviously part of a non-engine. Yep. Now let's go on to the, these guys. So. Mm -hmm. The breakers. The breakers, bro. Bro, these cards are crazy. Okay, these cards were definitely MVP. Uh, nothing more, nothing less. Three Dark Wheeler, three Droplet, three Talents, and three Impermanence. Uh, Pac, explain to these guys why we don't play hand traps. So basically, like we realized that, like. As we try to hand trap our opponent, your opponent actually like somehow like miraculously starts playing better. Like as we hand trap them, they like unlock like a uh, like, sixth sense, like you know, like an eighth gate, or like you know what I'm saying? Like like you know when Mike Guy like broke his all his legs? That's literally your opponent when they like when you hand trap them. So we're like, you know what? How about we just don't hand trap our opponent? Um because like I think our opponents start stressing more when they don't get hand trapped. Yes. And, or like they're like they scramble the way. Why aren't these guys hand trapped? Yeah. Or, or like a lot of people sequence really safe. Exactly. Yeah, they sequence really safe because they're like, okay, let me sequence this way so that I don't get punished by impermanent. Or like they overthink a lot of their lines. Whereas I think that if they, you know, look at the spreadsheet, they'll see that like the proper sequencing already beats hand traps. Yes. So like they should just always go for the biggest board because it naturally plays on hand traps anyways. Yes. Um, so we're like, okay, if we hand trap our opponent. We have a 0% win rate if they make any board. Exactly. We exactly. can't even draw anything. Exactly. So we're like, okay, how about we try to break their board? Yes. But then the question is, like, can we actually break the board? And yeah. And the answer is yes. Yes. We didn't think it was possible at first, but like I said, Sam and I, we went into the lab and we started testing. We just put up the god board. We put up Caesar, Desari, Verruges, Rage, Phantom. And we're like, okay, let's just draw six cards. Let's see if we can do it. Yes, I mean, and we were able to do it. And, and, yeah, and we pretended like we didn't know what was going on. Exactly. Like not like we didn't know what was going on, but we like we we didn't like know what non-engine like the other person was. Playing. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And like uh, these cards just provide you, I think you know, additional. Like I, I feel like these cards just provide so much more value than like what one Ash can do against the mirror, right? Yep. Because for example, like uh, if you think about it, in the mirror match, Phantom already negates your one hand trap. Yeah. So to be able to actually make them stop. You need to at least have three hand traps. Like three, right? like realistically. Like you need realistically three hand traps. Whereas one breaker takes care of the whole thing, yeah. right? And sometimes, guys, I, and I actually, I actually played on people's what is intelligence on not knowing how to combo. Yeah. Where sometimes, like, they don't even just end up on a good board. They just end up like yeah. Verudris and like Rage on field and everybody. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, like they don't end on the full god board sometimes, right? So Dark Willow just takes care of that and like. Drop like any combination of these two cards wins the game, especially like drop like and combine off with any of these cards instantly mm. just wins you the match, right? Yep. So these cards are really good. Uh, the, the only card that's not good going first is obviously it's only Dark Ruler. It's only Dark Ruler. That's it. You guys see these? <laughs> these are the, like okay, I guess three bricks going first, but these cards are just like uh, like great interruptions that yeah. you don't account for, right? I'm telling you, like I think people are comboing too safe because they're afraid of like the meta, which right now, which is bare hand traps, like. Yes. like because because there's so many hand traps, a lot of people are calmly in a way where they're like, let me just prioritize rage and like like you know make sure I have rage set up with Shavar so no no matter what I was on a rage or like they're like not like doing the combo right to end on DSRA which you know the um, best card the best yeah. card in the deck <clears throat> and also guys and do you know what that means right yeah they hand trap themselves yes they, and as a result they like Loki are hand trapping themselves they're hand trapping themselves and we're capitalizing on that and we're capitalizing yeah. on that all right so this is an extra deck real quick guys uh, so goddess uh, requiem. Uh, she's insane. She goes into him, and Moon. Moon is really good too. Oh wait, 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 we have to talk about Moon because this is the funniest part about the entire YCS. What? We got Moon effect, 
And guys, Moon has an actual effect. You guys probably think like, Bo, Moon just goes record, man. It's just a vanilla. Bo, do you guys know, like, do you guys know Moon has an effect? She basically makes it that you can use two of their link monsters to link summon into goddess. Yeah. Yeah, we'll right summon there. Moon, we'll declare the effect. We'll declare the effect. And opponents think we're like- We're trolling oh, them. They're, they're, they're looking at us like, all right. I'm like, yeah, like, it's okay. And they're like, yeah. Like, no they're, problem. They're no like, problem. yeah, no problem. No problem. Linked off their whole board. Linked off their whole board. <laughs> Linked off their whole board. Yeah. Plus the unicorn that we got for free. Yeah. Thank you so much. Summon goddess and get your whole yeah. board. Nice, nice deck. Yeah. So like, I, I did all tournament. Honestly, I was only, I, I, I only did it once yeah, I did. in each game. Yeah. In each game that I won, I only did it once because once they know that you're on this, they won't, they, they, they're obviously gonna not gonna like yeah. get there. Like, they, like once they, like they, they won't- But sometimes there. it's checkmate though. I remember like one time my opponent had Phantom and Caesar up. So what I did was I go, okay, make Phantom, make Moon, Moon effect target your Caesar. And the thing is, he wants to Phantom it, but the moment he Phantoms it, my Phantom checks his Caesar. Mm. So, or I just go Phantom to get his Phantom. So it was like a, literally a checkmate and I just linked off his Phantom and his Caesar. And he's like, there's just no counterplay. Yeah. <laughs> like, at some point, there's just no counterplay. But but this card, like Moon of the Close um, Heaven and Underworld Goddess, are really, really strong into Caesar. Yes. And the thing is, a lot of people tunnel vision into Caesar when, like, they don't know what to do. Because yeah. there's, like, two level sixes over there. When we're playing Snake Eyes at Watch Vegas, guys. The, the reason why the deck is broken is what? Savage Baron. Guys, and, and, and where is Savage Baron? Yes. Where, can, can you guys tell me where Savage Baron is? <laughs> they're on the balance. They're man. on the balance. They're on the balance. So, Verudris and Desari, see ya. Yeah. Honestly, I'm 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 gonna miss these guys. Yeah. They're 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 getting mad too. Yeah. All right. So with this sequence, the best, the best. You know, we rip this off, unicorn. Yama Yams, my favorite. Yo. That card is broken. It's is broken. But if, you, bro, but if you play two Yama, man, just don't attend the YCS. You know. <laughs> <laughs> just like guys, like just not. Come on, just play this. Play this necklace. Yeah. All right. Rage. Muck. I love Muck. Muck is crazy. Muck is crazy. SP so good. Caesar. Verudris. Uh, this hurts my heart. It's like, Sam, like we bought three keystrokes for no reason. Eh? I know, but I know. <laughs> no, it's not no reason, but I know. Like, yeah. I, I I love this card at three. Like, but there's just no like you cannot cut anything. You cannot cut anything. You can't cut anything. And then next is like Arrow Eater, Necro Equip, and DSR, DSRA. So, like, yeah, like we just can't cut it. Like, if I can play sixteen extra deck, you play that would be the like, first I, priority. Yeah. I cut off my 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 my, my pinky to play a, to play a third phantom. Yeah, like. This card is so good. Like, yeah. I run through two a lot, and like sometimes I'm just hoping to God, like I don't need a third one. Yeah, me too. <laughs> yeah. Me too. Yeah, yeah, I burned through two a lot. Yeah. yeah, I'm like, yeah, I burned through two, and hopefully that there's not not next turn. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. yeah, yeah. usually scoop. Yeah, right? and I was like, well, anyways, yeah, this is the the extra deck. This is absolutely perfect. A goddess is definitely MVP of the event. Yeah, uh, let's go to side deck real quick. So uh, going second, uh, this is yes. for the mirror. This is for the mirror. Uh, and of course, Metatronus. Yeah. This card is crazy. Honestly, I wish we played three, but we had to fit another card instead. We're playing three. We're gonna play three going forward, but guys, Evilly Match is probably the MVP. Every time you stop Evilly Match in the mirror, they have no grind game. I just, bro, I would Evilly Match them, they would stop me with hand traps. I said, I'm like, pass. And they go, pass back. Yes. <laughs> they have no resource. Guys, Sequentia gets banished. DSR gets banished. Verugia gets banished. Uh, like, usually the Rage gets banished, like, because like, they have to like, activate Chamber to play yes. back or they escape. Like all the resources are completely gone. And then Metatronus deals with the last threat. But we have evenly to pair with like Droplets, uh, Dirk a little more. Like the, basically these cards allow us to create more pairings. Yes. So that basically have the best odds that's going second. Yes. Because as you see, we have 12 insane breakers in the main. Now we go to 17, both side. And a 4-2 card list, like it's a very favor for you to draw too. Exactly. So. And honestly guys, I, I learned my lesson with how good Droplet evenly is. Face. Look at my face. I'm like, yep. Yeah. I'll, I'll be honest, guys. Sam would have topped Nats if he didn't literally pair into the what is it? The, the gimmick puppets. The gimmick puppet decks. Like, literally, literally, I'm not even capping. He lost it evenly droplets so many times. Twice in Swiss, twice. right? Twice. So twice yeah. so both, two gimmick puppet players. It's so good. But obviously, yeah, you know, like you know, if you can't beat them, join them. Yeah. You know, so I joined them, and Metatron is just so powerful. Like it's also a starter as well. So. Yeah. It's a starter against the mirror, yeah. Uh, because you hit any of their dark fiends, you summon spirit from the deck, yeah. And you, if you have like paired off with Gusum or Shavara, you basically full combo yeah. from there. So like, you can also fun. summon uh, you can summon the, the fiend smith um, off targeting the rage because it meets the same attack and it's also both fiends. Yeah, so it's like that. Yeah. And honestly, there is a play that came up, guys. Metatronus is so powerful, and like this is why you shouldn't play the escape version. Yeah. Because they go escape target rage, you chain Metatronus. Yeah. And you summon your own rage and you banish it both face down. Now like. Now, like, it's completely over because they don't get it back. Uh, call, but going first, called by uh, two Daybear. This looks really sus as hell, but 
we had to cut it. Like we had to cut it, and I and this is what we cut it for. And I'll show you. So it's three ash. So these are all good against tenpai. And remember, guys, against tenpai, you never ash anything else but the heretic seal. Yeah. You let the seal bounce back. The actually seals effect. You ash that. That's it. You don't yeah. ash the hydro. You don't ash anything. Let them let let them make seals. You hold that for that. This is this is literally all yeah. like for heretic seal. This is really like yeah. so good. Callbind is good for heretic seal going second as well. And then it also is going. This is god cutting heretic. Yeah, seal. and it helps you uh, call by uh, chummy and shifter when you go first. Yeah. And the reason why we have ash is also because when you go first, you want to take out the dark rulers, which are bad. Um, going first cards, and then the Ash allows you to also ask their Chummy yes. or ask their Phantasmi, so the, it just sits in the hand, you full combo them, it's instant lose. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And then obviously just the one-ups that we, we decided to play, Mannequin Cat. Oh. This is the goo combo. It's the goo, and yeah. Pac figured this out, because you have Beckonings in the deck, we have, we have, we have how many Beckonings? Three, yeah. six, yeah. seven, eight. Yeah, we have eight. several rotations. We have several rotations, we have eight Beckonings in the deck, and you make Mannequin Cat. Yeah. Mannequin Cat target their shifter, yep. which I did, I did once this tournament. Yep. I, I did it once I, as well. I, 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 I thank God that I, that I get shifter a lot. Yeah. I got shifter once. But yeah, uh, yeah so I went Mannequin Cat target shifter, uh, summon shifter in the field, summon Chaos Hunter. Chaos Hunter. Guys. And I played against the Runic Runic Whitewood matchup. I summoned this against the Runic Whitewood. It's a freaking fiend, fam. Yeah. So what does that mean? Yo. This dumps this. And then you can Mudcracker, Mudcracker back, back, the back Chaos Hunter. Mudcracker back yeah. the Chaos Hunter. Yeah, so even if you don't get shiftered, right? So you might be wondering like, okay, are we playing Chaos Hunter just because if we get shiftered, we'll just mannequin cut it? No, there's even more app pieces of that. The fact that we can arrow eater send Chaos Hunter, uh, pop the rage, rage, add back the Chaos Hunter so that you have a hand trap against like Ritual Beast. Or we can send it off Air Eater and then bring it back off of Mudraker, and then that will give you um, the uh, you know the cancels on the board. And against Ritual Beast, for example, that's an FTK. Yes, because exactly. they just can't bash anything. Yes, yeah. I guess the 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 Rooney, the Rooney Whitewood matchup. They can't I have had, any Rooney cards. I, honestly, to activate, yeah. I'm so happy. I, I I drew it. I, I like I had it in my opening hand. I got really lucky. But he went draw face, summon Hugin, Hugin uh, effect, discard, uh, chilling one. I chain in on Hugin, chilling two. Something Chaos Hunter. Yeah, so it's like chain chain two, ca chilling two Chaos Hunter, chilling three Impermanence. Yes, 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 yes. Well, no, yeah, yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah. So you can chain <laughs> one, chain two Chaos Hunter, chaining three uh, Impermanence. Impermanence. Yeah. So yeah, that's good. It's instantly, he's instantly scoop. <clears throat> this, uh, Red Resonator, it's also a fiend. Uh, Pac, why, why do you play this card? So basically, like, because we're playing a breaker approach to uh, Yubel, that means that, like, um, <clears throat> we actually break the board. Yes, so we have to basically, when we lose the roll, we have to sit there and wait until we see our sixth card. Because, bro, how many times you've drawn Dark Rule off the top? Bro, how many times so you've good. Draw this like, off the top. Like, guys, like, like <laughs> my hand is all injured. I'm like, please, anyone breaker. Yeah, just draw this Dark and, Rule. And, and I play through everything. Yeah. Please, Dark Rule off the top. Yeah. Then drop it off the top. Tactics yeah. off the top. Like, this is so good. Even yeah. off the top, it's so insane. So, like, as a result, you're going to be playing more drawn out games, quite frankly. So this card just helps you, you know, solve that issue. Yes. But I'll be honest, I only went to the time once, and I summoned this once, and the one time I summoned, it, I already won the game. Yeah. Like, like I, I already did like infinite damage. Yeah. I just did this for fun, just, just, yeah. for, just for flex. Yeah. The only, I only went into time once in this tournament as well against Joey, Joey Chu, uh, big bro, uh, and you know I was able to resolve Red Resonator, and it's really good because it, it, it applies really well with Dark Ruler, right? Because Dark Ruler, you can't inflict damage. But Resident Evil, we, we, we gain life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? So it's like, it's just, this is so powerful. Like, yeah. this card is just really good than any burn card. Yeah. Uh, and last but not least, MVP. Phoenix. Oh my god. You, yeah, you yeah. Were, you I told Pog, yo, we're cutting yeah. one D barrier, putting yeah. it Phoenix. So, guys, um, Nightmare Phoenix, Sam added this last minute. Yo, thank God it did, guys. If it was a third barrier, I think I would have lost like like three, four matches. I'm not even sure I would have went X4. Yes. Because, I guys, I play five Tenpai people. Like, Tenpai Bro, duelists. And and they play power lip filter. Power filter. Power filter, right? Nice. You guys know power filter? That wow. card is toxic as hell. <laughs> yeah. And guys, though, bro, they do not care. They, they have no remorse. They have no remorse. They're like power filter. Power, power filter, heretic seal. Yeah. Fem, I saw it in every language. Italian, Spanish, with French. Like I, like some guy had it in two different languages. He had two up. I'm like, I'm like let me read that. Uh, okay, can't summon thousand. Okay, <laughs> all right. <laughs> so, guys, the reason why my, my reason I told Pog was that okay, we already have a lot of cards against the Tenpai matchup. Come here. So, we got look. So, siding in, we have Ash, Call by Barry. Cards, so six cards, right? Six cards. And yeah. we don't want any, like, because we, we, we want to make our side deck as universal as possible against most decks, right? So, basically, we side these cards, and I feel like like, call by is kind of like barrier, I guess, you know, like, I'm- Even against Runic, you can put uh, this as well into- Exactly, and also these cards are the same cards against Runic too, like yeah. barrier and also Ash, right? Yeah. Uh, which is really, really strong. But I told Pac, I'm like, yo, Pac, 
You know, like the way that Tenpai players think is like sometimes Tenpai, sometimes Tenpai start. Yeah, they start, bro. Yeah, like because their logic is okay. I'm a erratic seal, a power filter. They if they can't beat that when like on the clapback, they kill us. Yeah, that's literally it. So Tenpai players actually start now. Yeah, and they start. They're so starting. and yeah. honestly, I don't know whether or not they're gonna let us start or or they're, they're gonna, gonna start, make us start or they're yeah. gonna make us start. So I always side these cards in. Yeah, against them plus these two. Yeah, always. Yeah, so I, these two as well. So I, so I take a goddess and I take out Muckraker and put these cards in. Yep. And you just keep these cards in in rotation, and and honestly, I would never want my top four if I didn't have Nightmare Phoenix. Yeah. Oh, there's a crazy play you could do with Nightmare Phoenix. Um, I guess Senpai, you might want to like if they have one imperm on Phoenix, you might lose. Instead, what you could do is you go like if you special summon like a unicorn, for example, you can go normal back, um, activate gates, gates as you normal summon back again. Um, and under power filter, it says you cannot special summon. But back, that's why beckoning is like literally better than Lotus in so many scenarios. Because you normal it. You can normal summon multiple times. And then what you do is you make Yama with the, uh, with the two backs. With the two backs. Add Shavara. Uh, add Shavara. Then you make Nightmare Phoenix with the Unicorn and the, uh, Yama. the Yama. And then you target the Power Filter. If they try to uh, chain Impermanence on the Nightmare Phoenix, you can change Shavara to pop the Phoenix to dodge the Impermanence. Um, and then you also trigger off Yama. And yeah, trigger Yama on Resolution and then pop their... Uh, and then pop their power filter. These are lines! Yeah. I did that like I did that play once. My time looked at me, he's like, he looked at me in awe. He's like, damn. These are lines! Like, you played nice. We're definitely gonna adapt this for sure for Niagara, which yeah. is literally in five days. Yeah. If you guys are watching this video. So obviously the format's kinda over now. Uh Motrami Fuveros. It's crazy. Guess man. what guys? Uh, uh, just a little hint. I'm playing Tenpai. <laughs> <laughs> So guys, uh, can't you play Tenpai? Can't you play Tenpai? We were just talking shit about Tenpai. I'm like, Yo, no, yeah, I'm you can't Tenpai. beat them, join them. One last thing, man. I love Mexico. I love Cancun. I love the culture. I love the people here. I love all the Mexicans that are here. They're so nice. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, that's it, guys. Smash thumbs up for more. And guys, I recommend you guys, you know, learn how to get better like Yu-Gi-Oh! like me. You know what I'm saying? And just learn to improve every day. And Pac's going to be here to coach you guys. So join his Metafy class. Yeah, I'll leave the top of the link in the description box below for you guys to check on out. I'm not too sure if these Supreme Pro play match are still available. But if they are, you guys can visit TXM.com. Yeah, High 10. Pac 10. And also the sleeves are coming back, guys. I, I, like, we're, I, I've been like, yeah. I've waiting almost six months now for restocks myself. Yeah. I don't have any more sleeves. So yeah. I'm sorry, guys. They're coming back very, very soon. And yeah, honestly, just like one more, one more, one more thing to say is like, Yo, yo, you guys can't talk shit no more. <laughs> you, guys, you guys can't, you guys can't talk shit no more. You can't, you can't. Tommy, Timmy, talk shit at home? You talking? We can't.